again, suffice to say, if, the, if you think that this is going to be an issue, you need to find out about it. Because that could have other implications, which I'll come on to in a minute. <coughs> so the reverse charges to which I referred then. The way this works, you're going, uh, I'll use Italy as an example, only because I did have a gentleman a couple of weeks ago who was doing the same thing, and he had reached the VAT distance sales threshold for Italy, which I understand, and don't quote me on this, I think is about €34,000. But his sales to Italy, in total, over an annual period, had exceeded the VAT threshold in Italy. He had to register the VAT in Italy. So of course, that, what that does then, transactions that normally swash about between you and them, or them and you, sort of come out of you, and then you're going to be accounting for VAT in Italy by this gentleman. Um, so again, if you think that that might affect you, you need to be getting in touch uh, with the fiscal authority, Italy, wherever it happens to be. Um, the Europa website that I've put up there is really, really good. It's the European Commission website, and it's got every single as you can imagine, it's quite a big website with a huge amount of information. But in each country's um, area, it will have um, English explanations for how to contact their authorities um, to enable you to get the ball rolling. So you're out of the UK bit then for those transactions with, with Italy, and then you're accounting for that in Italy in your um, transactions there. So, as I... Um, when you're out and about on your travels and you're going to um, another BC member state and you're staying in a hotel and you're flying and this and that, of course in the UK, I don't know if you already know this, but you can claim a VAT on a hotel bill if you're away from your normal place of work, you can claim a back rent on your fuel, you can claim a VAT on your meals under the subsistence rules, and all of that stuff you can have back. But actually the rules are different in each BC member state. So you may go to Italy or wherever it happens to be and they might say, yes, you can So again, this is something that you're going to need to find out. Now, this uh, is a new electronic system that came in on the 1st of January this year. It used to be the Format 66. It has to be done electronically and you'll have to access it through the government gateway. But guess what? You have to fill in the form in the language of the country in which you incur the expenses.
Well, EC sells this. If you're selling to the EC already and you're selling goods, there's always been an EC sales list for goods. So filling the EC sales list, and that tells us that it's very much a, an anti-fraud device, this EC sales list, because we can track what you've sold to the country to whom you sold it, or vice versa. So it's not just, oh God, another form to fill in. You know, there is a purpose to it. So the EC sales list was always for goods, but now it is also for goods services. So if you, see, if you sell services to another EC member state, you will now have to complete an EC sales list as well as your marketing. Okay. If you're selling goods, you will have to submit monthly your EC sales list. If your intra-community goods exceeds £70,000 uh, in the current quarter or indeed in any of the previous four quarters, but if it's below that threshold, then you submit quarterly. So the EC sales list is all in the current quarter, <coughs> February, March, April, May, June, etc. Uh, that threshold will be reduced January 2012 to £35,000, so quite a big drop. Um, but your EC sales list for your uh, services is the same one, it can be submitted quarterly. So if you're only doing services, it will still be quarterly. If you do both, um, you might be in a position where you're having to do the goods because it's over 70,000 monthly, and then you might have services which has to be done quarterly. You can actually just put them all on the monthly return if you wish. You can't do it the other way around if you're over the threshold. Um, and there are um, codes on there which will denote whether or not it's a service or whether or not it's a good service. So, key payroll updates this is a very, very quick um, flag for you just to be aware that these things may affect you. So equalisation of the state pension age, ladies of a certain age will be acutely aware of this. Um, and the, uh, from the 6th of April 2010, the age at which women reach the state pension age will gradually rise um, to become the same as it currently is for men um, at 65. Uh, and that will be phased in between April 2010 and April 2020, so you know, a really long lead in there. National minimum wage change then from the 1st of October this year. So the national the main rate will be payable at £5.93 per hour for workers aged 21 or over. And revised rates will come into force for all age bands, so £4.90 to an hour for workers aged 18 to 20 and then £3.64 an hour for workers aged 60 to 70. And again, all of that detail and information on the website. Um, and there's a, an apprentice rate that will apply from the 1st of October, uh, and that will be £2.50 per hour for apprentices, for all apprentices aged under 19. So again, if, if you do have apprentices, that's going to affect you. National insurance Contributions. Now, there are changes that will be coming into effect from 6th of April 2011. So the new rates, um, <coughs> the, the primary threshold will be increased. The primary threshold is the threshold which the um, employer pay, pays, I understand. Now, don't quote me on that because um, I, I may have that wrong. I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But be, suffice to say that you need to be aware of that. Um, and the primary and secondary thresholds, which are currently, there is, there is a differential between the two, the differentials will remain. So they won't be aligned in any way. Um, PAYE online, so all starter and leaver forms will have to be on filed online with employers with fewer than 50 employees. So that'll be P45s, um, P46s, and so on. And then the last one, which came into, uh, which was brought in as a result of the budget in uh, June this year, and there will be a, the, the regional employer thing.